Our next speaker is Seung Yun Ko from Plastic, and he's going to talk about TurboGraph Plus, a system for very large, shall I say, massive graphs, analytics on massive graphs. Right, thanks. Sure, begin. Okay, uh, let's start. So, hi, I'm Song Yun from Postec in Korea, and this is TurboGraph Double Plus Scalable and Fast Graph Analytics System, and it is a joint work with Professor Ok Shin Han. So, as you all know, graph is an effective way to represent entities and their relationships, and examples are kind of road network, social graph, and web graph. And using various analytics, in valuable information can be earned, such as shortest paths, communities, and ranks of pages. And next, I will explain two motivations in designing our system. The first motivation is that real graphs are really huge. And typical social scale graphs, such as social networks and knowledge graphs, contain 100 billion edges while the web scale graphs have more than a trillion edges. Furthermore, the size of brain graph, known as human connectome, can reach up to 100 trillion edges. Thus, this calls for a system that can efficiently handle such very large scale graphs by using distributed machines. Distributed methods are categorized into two methods, in-memory and external memory. And while the in-memory system focuses on efficiency, but with a risk of out-of-memory error, the external memory system focuses on scale up with a fixed memory budget, but with a sacrifice in per performance. Here, Gemini and chaos are the state of the art in each group. Here is experimental research for page rank while doubling the graph size up to the more than 200 billion edges. And surprisingly, no system achieves both scalability and efficiency at the same time. Although Gemini shows the best performance for small graphs, it cannot process the large graphs due to the out-of-memory error showing its limited scalability. And although chaos can process up to the largest graph, but its longest execution time shows its poor efficiency. And even worsely, there are much challenging but important graph analytics that's called neighborhood century analytics. Neighborhood century analytics requires processing multiple neighborhoods around each vertex. Examples include triangle counting, clustering coefficients, and subgraph matching. But the vertex century model that most systems adopt allows computation only with one home neighborhood around each vertex. Due to this limitation, the vertex century systems encounter serious problems. And the below is an example where each vertex needs two home neighborhood, such as for triangle counting. Here, because vertex one, V1, is a one home reachable from vertex zero, V0, V1's one home neighborhood data is encoded as a message and sent to V0 then it can construct its two home neighborhood. And it's the same for V1. The messages are sent to V1 and it constructs. And it's the same for the other vertices. Here, we can compute the total size of messages in terms of the number of edges, which is the summation of squared degrees of all vertices in a graph. And the, but the problem is that it can easily exceed the size of input graph. So even though the input graph can be loaded into memory, the system can crash due to the out-of-memory error. That is, all vertex-centric systems can suffer from the notorious out-of-memory problem for neighborhood century analytics. In order to confirm our claim, we repeat the experiment for triangle counting. As you can see, no system can process triangle counting for a graph with a half a billion edges, which is very small. And you may also notice that there is no result for Gemini and chaos. 
And this is because their limited processing models do not support neighborhood central analytics. Given these two motivations, we develop a new system for scalable and fast processing of neighborhood central analytics called TurboGraph Double Plus. This is a distributed and external memory graph analytics system with the following main contributions. First, nested window streaming model is a new processing model that can process neighborhood central analytics only with a fixed memory budget. And second, guest programming model is extended to support neighborhood central analytics. And third, three level parallel and overlapped processing maximizes the overall efficiency of a system by fully parallelizing and overlapping CPU, disk, and network tasks. And last, our balanced buffer-aware partitioning scheme balances the workloads with a low partitioning cost. So uh, in the following presentation, I will explain them in order, but I will mostly focus on the first two parts due to the time limit. Before explaining our processing model, we first define some concepts in order to abstract neighborhood central analytics. We say that a vertex is capable of reachable from another one if there exists a shortest path of length smaller than or equal to k. Then the k of neighborhood of a vertex V can be defined as an induced subgraph of all vertices k of reachable from V. Now we define k reachable work set. k reachable work set of a vertex V is a set of all possible works starting from V within its k home neighborhood. Instead of a pass, we use work that is more general than pass in that the same vertex can appear multiple times in a pass. The below is an example where k is 2 and v is 0 and with a data graph g. For length 1 works, work 0, 1 is included because v1 is a one reachable from v0. And for length 2 works, all works to vertices 2 hole reachable from v0 are included. Now I can introduce an abstraction for neighborhood central analytics called the k work neighborhood query. k work neighborhood query traverses the k hope neighborhood of each vertex and enumerates all works in k reachable work set and perform computation with each work enumerated. So here is a pseudocode for processing it. For each vertex, we enumerate all works in each k reachable work set and execute the usually defined compute function with each work enumerated. Here, if machines have large enough memory to hold the entire data graph, then we can easily enumerate all the works. But the problem is that the memory is never infinite. So the problem to solve is how we can enumerate all the works of length k with a given memory budget. Our idea is to divide the memory space into k areas and load the vertex and each urgency list in each area. Then we can enumerate each work of length k. But for efficiency, we load multiple vertices in each area and enumerate multiple works at the same time. The below is an example where k is 2 and also on a data graph g. Say that uh, we want to process works of vertices 0, 1, 2 at the same time. Then we load them into area 1 and process their urgency list. Then we can enumerate the works of length 1. And here we select the vertices to traverse further among the ending vertices of the works. Here, let's assume that we select vertices 4 and 5. Then we load them into area 2 and process the urgency list again. In this way, we can enumerate, we can safely enumerate the works of length 2. Until now, I explained the abstraction for neighborhood central analytics called k work neighborhood query, and our idea for processing it with a given memory budget. 
Now I introduce a concept of stream that is a data model in our processing model. Given a sequence of vertices, we consider the corresponding sequence of vertex attribute values like page rank values and urgency list as a vertex stream VS and urgency list stream S, respectively. Then we can define vertex and urgency list window as a memory area for VS and S, respectively. Now I will explain our new processing model called nested window streaming model. In nest, k pairs of vertex stream and urgency list stream inside one another to enumerate works of length k. I will explain it using two examples. The below is an example where k is one and with a data graph g again. Assume that we are given a vertex stream vs one and urgency list stream urgs one like this. Then we place a window on each of them and we stream their edges within the area one and perform the page rank computations. Then we slide to the next and repeat the processing. Now here is another example for triangle counting where k is two. In this case, it nests two pairs of vertex and adjacent list streams. Assume that we are given VS1 and adjacent one like this and also say that up to five edges can be loaded into each address list window. First, we load V0 and V1's audience lists and we iterate their one home neighbors and select the vertices to traverse further among the ending vertices. Here, say that we are interested in the walks with edges whose ending vertex has larger vertex ID than the source vertex. That is, vertices one, two, four, five for the next level. Now we load the other list of vertex one, but here there's no triangle, triangle found. Next, here's an, uh, next, uh, here's triangle from one, two, and five. But how can you find it? If, if a length of, if length one walk and length two walk have the same starting vertex and the ending vertex, then it's a triangle. Now, again here, note that while processing at area two, we can still access the data in area one. So from vertex two, we access its parent vertex, V1, and finds the common neighbor of vertex one and vertex two. So we find the triangle. And next, in the same manner, we find another triangle, and in this way, we can find all triangles in a data graph. Until now, I have explained how our NWSM works using two examples. Now I explain how users program them with our programming model. We choose the guest programming model for its popularity and ease of use and extend it to support our NWSM. For page rank where k is one, the required calls are almost the same as in the typical guess, as you see here. So for example, the scalar function iterates its, the vert each vertex's one home neighborhood and performs the page rank computations and gather and apply functions are also the same. And to support the k when the k is larger than one, we allow users to define a scalar function for each level of work enumeration. That, it, there, that is, there are k scalar functions in total. Here is a, an example of triangle counting where two scalar functions are defined. The level one scalar function in a home neighbor is invoked for all vertices. But for ease of explanation here, we focus on vertex one. Here among each one home neighbors, it marks the vertices, to, the vertices to traverse further. Then the level two scalar function find the triangles is invoked for all marked vertices. And let's see for vertex two. 
we first follow its parent vertex, which is vertex one, then by identifying the common neighbor of vertex one and two, we can find the triangle one, two, five. And similarly, the user can easily program other applications with few lines of modifications. And as we have seen here, users do not need to understand the underlying mechanism of our NWSM, which is also good characteristic of our programming model. And I have talked how about how our NWSM supports neighborhood century analytics and how we can easily program them using our programming model. But another interesting issue is how we can efficiently execute the proposed NWSM in a distributed environment where there are three types of hardware resources. But due to the time limit, I highlight only the best char characteristics of our execution strategy called three-level parallel and overlap processing, in short, 3LPO. 3LPO maximizes the efficiency for executing NWSM by fully parallelizing and overlapping CPU, disk, and network. And please refer to our paper for detailed algorithm. Now, I explain our experimental setup. We use two groups of queries. For group one, where case one, we use page rank, single source, shortest path, and weakly connected components. And for group two, where case two, we use triangle counting and local clustering coefficient. And here are data sets and our cluster specification. And for competitors, we use both in-memory and external memory systems in order to evaluate both the efficiency and scalability of our system. And please note that PT is a state-of-the-art triangle counting method on memory use, not a general graphic system. We evaluate our 3 april strategy first. We measure the time for CPU computation, disk, and network IO tasks. And the results show that the query execution times are almost determined by the time taken for the most bounded hardware resource. So we can say that 3IPO achieves full parallelism and overlap of 3 hardware resources. And we evaluate the overall performance with the real graphs. Here we use group one queries. As you can see, in terms of both scalability and efficiency, our system consistently and significantly outperforms all competitors. And we also use a group two queries, and TurboGrafx Plus is the only system that processes triangle counting and clustering coefficient without crashing. And also we test the data scalability by varying the size of synthetic army graphs, and the, the results show that TurboGrafx Plus almost always outperforms all competitors. So to, to conclude, our system TurboGrafx Double Plus is a scalable and fast distributed graph analytics system with the following desirable features, and there are those, those are our main contributions. And thank you for listening, and is there any question? Very simple question. Have yeah. you made the source code available for the um, TurboGraph++ Plus Plus system? Uh, you mean the source code yes. for our system? Yes. So we are going to make it open source, okay. but we are currently cl doing code cleaning and doing some performance testing. Right. So I will let you know when it's available. Yeah. Thank you. And then one, a little bit more harder question. <laughs>